Welcome back, everyone. Demon and Quickshot have lane swapped in to join me in her last match. Dark Passage easily took down Legacy Esports, and while we heard it from Holy Phoenix, we, th we did a better pick in ban phase, in his opinion, going into this game. But, Trevor, you had a bone to pick with Legacy Esports in the mid lane. Oh, I completely agree. I have no idea what Zed was meant to do in that pick. Uh, voluntarily putting Zed into the option of Oriana is always going to end in a bad day. And when you've got Braum and Nidalee, Nidalee who builds Bruiser these days, Zed's always got a time limit for how effective he's going to be. On the same token, they also ran Cogmore Morgana into Jinx Braum. And at the very beginning of the day, I was like, that's a lane matchup that Jinx Abram going to win. Nidalee is going to be able to punish Irelia. And it's something that we've seen happen. I, I really feel that Legacy dropped the ball in this picks and bans. And I'm not quite sure what they were hoping to do, whether it was overconfidence or whether they felt their comp would actually work. Yeah, and if you look at like game one, they had obviously the 2v1. It worked well. They were almost on the inner very early on. This time around, they're at, right, you guys are going to go top. We're going to 2v2 you. And sure as hell, they got themselves first put in that top. They almost got a double kill for Holy Phoenix. But again, it's something that got Holy Phoenix rolling on Jinx, and it just worked out so well for them. Yeah, and then on the other hand, uh, they were, both top laners were in the bottom lane. It went one simple dive. Irelia went down there as well. And actually, from then on, the Dark Passage was able to build up a big lead, which um, resulted in team fights where they immediately had to lead. And let's actually look at a replay of one of those team fights where Legacy overcommits something we've seen both teams do. Let's not be new. Very true. Both teams have overcommitted, but this was really the game-changing overcommitment in my mind. If you look at the goal difference, it's already 4K. Legacy have fallen further behind than they did in game one of the day. Roll a clip out, and you'll notice Choo Choo's, he thinks he can go in on Holy Phoenix. Truthfully, he has been caught, so he's trying to make the best of a bad situation. But what follows is the rest of Legacy all committing. Teleport comes down, and we see, you know, Minky, well, he's just trying to kill secure, is the term I'm going to use. And it's just all disjointed. Legacy hunting kills and not really looking at the bigger picture. Yeah, and you just got to wonder, because actually, if you looked at the start of it, Juju probably could have got away. Use the living shadow to get away. It's not his ultimate, so he could have just dashed, done a bit of juking, done a bit of anything. But instead, he pulled the entire team to commit to one big, crazy fight that they were never going to win because they were already behind. Yeah, and it's something that Legacy have done a lot. In game one, they managed to pull it back because their composition allow them to win team fights despite having a gold deficit. This time around, having a gold deficit with the champions meant that it was nearly impossible because of all the protection that you had on the side of Dark Passage and the mobility that they had. I also think, if I'm going to be very, very critical, Fab Fabulous played Nidalee, kind of like old Nidalee. We didn't really see him split pushing a whole lot. I do think it may have been a symptom of the game. They got ahead, so he stayed ahead. But he could have done a little bit more to control those side lanes and dictate the tempo of the game that way. Yeah, I absolutely agree. So. Of course, we have two games left, but it does look like these two teams are front runners to be going up against each other tomorrow. It's kind of funny because if they go up against each other in a best of five, they're already two games and they were really able to scope each other out. Do you feel like Dark Passage has now found the way to beat them in three straight games? Well, honestly, I think as you know, Holy Phoenix pointed out, the ban phase is crucial for both these teams to pick and ban phase if they can get the right comp. You know, over a best of five, you can almost sniff each other out and you'd obviously start figuring out. Clearly Tristan is something that has to be taken out there. But also, the, the, the maybe the AD carries could well be the focus for both of these teams or the supports, but it's it's all about what lanes they get into. Yeah, I, I kind of feel the same. I do think picks and bands is very important for both of these teams. They do go hell of a aggressive often. And I also think whoever has the ability to play control may be able to surprise their opponents in an extended series. But before we get to that, both of these teams do have to finish like 3-1 yeah. on the day yep. if they both win their next games against Russian Force. And then because of the head-to-head -head rules, because Dark Passage has beaten Legacy in a faster time, they will take the higher seed into the final tomorrow. Yep, and uh, as Holy Phoenix was saying, well, I'm doing it, we're making it happen, so we'll see how that plays out. We're ready to head into the next game. So